All right, so we are going to spend some time going through the body systems that we will be covering this semester. Uh, so it's not important at this point for you to know all of the intricate details about each of the body systems, just kind of a general overview of the body systems so you kind of know what we're going to be addressing throughout the semester. Uh, so the first one is the integumentary system. Integumentary system. So the integumentary system is really our skin, mainly, our skin, our hair, our nails. And this is our protective layer. So it's for protection, this system. Sorry, there's not much of a division. So our integumentary system, which is composed of our skin, it's kind of the exterior of our body or the most superficial part of our body here, the skin, the hair, the nails. And they're used for protection, trying to keep the inside of our body separate from our external environment uh, so we can choose what we put into the body. The next system that we'll go over is the skeletal system. So our skeletal system is made up of our bones, of course. Our bones, our joints, whoops, joints, and uh, cartilages. And our skeletal system is used for strength, for support, so strength uh, to stand up, to help us uh, move things, support. Uh, usually when we think of our skeletal system, we're thinking about support. Uh, so it's as an attachment spot for our muscles, so it's used for leverage to allow us to move our bodies and move things inside of our body. Uh, gives our body shape. Uh, so those are some of the main uh, parts or the main uh, functions of our skeletal system. The next system that we will take a look at is our muscular system. So our muscular system is made up of our muscles. Mainly when we're talking about our muscular system, we're talking about our skeletal muscles. So our skeletal muscles are used for movement, uh, and, and the other muscles that we'll talk about as well, they're all used for movement. So we have our different types of muscles. When we're talking about the muscular system, we're talking about our skeletal muscles, which are moved for uh, movements of body parts. And there are different types of muscle that'll be addressed in other systems as well. That includes our cardiac muscle, And we have smooth muscle. So we will talk about these different types of muscles uh, when we're addressing the muscular system, but we'll take a closer look at these types, the cardiac muscle and the smooth muscle, when we get into other systems uh, that utilize those different types of muscles. Then the next system that we'll take a look at is the nervous system. And the nervous system is composed of our brain, our spinal cord, uh, the associated nerves and nerve endings. And the nervous system function is for control, for control and coordination. So this is how we are going to control and coordinate body functions. One of the ways that we do that. All right, so moving on to the next system that we will be taking a look at is our endocrine system. And this is another way that we have control. So our oops, endocrine system, uh, this is another way that we have control and coordination. And this is how we regulate body functions. And this includes our endocrine glands. So this is our system that includes the hormones. And I'm not going to list out all of the endocrine glands here. Uh, we'll talk about that when we get to the endocrine system. Uh, but we have several end endocrine glands, including our pituitary gland, the thyroid gland, parathyroid, the adrenals, our pancreas, uh, testes, ovary, liver. So all of these are different types of endocrine glands. And these are going to be producing our hormones. So when we talk about the endocrine system, we'll talk about the different glands and the different hormones that they produce. So both of our nervous system and our endocrine system are going to be used for control and coordination and regulating body functions. The nervous system does this via impulses, 
and then the endocrine system does this via hormones. Then the next system we'll look at is our cardiovascular. Cardiovascular system, also called the circulatory system. I prefer cardiovascular. I find that it's a little bit more specific uh, because cardio is related to the heart and vascular is related to the vessels. And so when I'm talking about the cardiovascular system, that's really what the cardiovascular system is composed of is the heart and our blood vessels. And then that also includes the blood that's in those blood vessels and the heart. So our cardiovascular system, our, our circulatory system, and then the function of this is to move the blood throughout the, blood, the body. Move the blood throughout the body. And the function of that, of course, is to move nutrients and wastes. Nutrients and wastes. So then after our cardiovascular system, the next system we'll take a look at is actually kind of a combination of both. Uh, it's the lymphatic system, and we combine that with the immune system. And that's because our lymphatic system are really just our lymph vessels. Uh, so we have lymph vessels. We have our also lymph tissue. We have various lymph organs. organs, and then our lymphocytes. And really, we couple this with the immune system uh, because the lymphatic system is really just kind of the structure, and then the immune system is what is working throughout that structure and kind of throughout the body as a whole. So we'll talk about these different lymph vessels, and what is going to be in the lymph vessels is lymph, uh, but what lymph is composed of is a lot of different things, including our immune system cells. Uh, so the function of our lymphatic system uh, is actually partially its drainage, uh, drainage, and protection. So we'll talk about why drainage, because we have an overflow of fluid from the cardiovascular system, and then our lymph is actually going to, our lymphatic system is going to bring that extra fluid uh, and, and get it moving throughout the body and get it back up to uh, the, the top and to our subclavian veins. But also protection because we're, we're coupling this with our lymphatic tissue, which is composed of our different immune system cells. So those two will be kind of lumped in together, and we'll look at the structure that the lymphatic provides for the immune system cells. After we discuss those systems, then we're going to take a look at our respiratory system. So our respiratory system is composed of our lungs, also the nose, the trachea, our bronchi and bronchioles, and then including our alveolar sacs, uh, which are composed of alveoli. And so what we have here is the respiratory system is all working together for gas exchange. So this is a way that we get oxygen in, uh, oxygen in, and CO2 out. So that's our gas exchange system. After we look at the respiratory system, then we are going to move on to the digestive system. The digestive system is composed of our alimentary canal. and other associated organs or uh, accessory organs. And again, there are lots of those different organs in our elementary canal. We won't go into detail right now, but that includes our oral cavity or our mouth, going down the esophagus, getting into the stomach, our small intestine, our large intestine. Uh, then our accessory organs include things like the liver, the pancreas, our salivary glands, uh, the teeth, the tongue. And once we get to the digestive system, we'll take a closer look at those things. And so our digestive system then is for digestion and absorption of food.
So getting the energy into our body. Next, we'll take a look at the urinary system. And the urinary system is composed of the kidneys. They're doing the bulk of the work in the urinary system. The ureters, the bladder or urinary bladder, and the urethra. And the urinary system function is for regulation of our body's internal environment. Uh, so getting rid of wastes and getting them out of our body via the urine. So we'll say regulation of the body's internal environment. And then we do that via urine, so production, uh, excretion of urine. After the urinary system, we're going to take a look at the reproductive systems. Reproductive systems. Systems, of course, because we have both the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system. So for our male reproductive system, we're talking about the penis and testes as well as associated organs that we'll talk about. And then for the female reproductive system, we're talking about the uterus, the ovaries, and then our external genitalia for both of these. All right, so again, in this case, we're going to take a closer look at all of the individual pieces and parts to both of the reproductive systems and when we get to that toward the end of the semester. So for the reproductive system, the function here <coughs> is going to be for um, basically for producing a fetus if we look at them together. And then of course those would be specific to each reproductive system. For the male reproductive system that would be by providing, uh, by creating and providing sperm <clears throat> to fertilize the egg that then comes from the female, the egg or the ova. All right, so that's our overview of our different body systems. And at this point, this is all you need to know. You need to know the different system that we're talking about, the name of that system, um, some general organs that are associated with that system, and then the general function associated with that system. We're not going to get into a whole lot of detail. I'm not going to ask you to write any of this out to where you have every single organ in there. It's just so that you understand what each of these systems are. Um, you can kind of already see some overlapping function in the systems, uh, and then you just kind of have a general idea of where we're going throughout the semester. <clears throat>